Here we are at M3 Rock Festival, and of course, the one and only <laughs> Doro Pesh. Oh. <laughs> so oh. thank you so much for taking your time out to do this interview. Oh, I, first to. question is, what does M3 Rock Festival mean to you? Oh man, it's the second time now that we are here. There are great people there. It's a good mix between like the old school rock metal people, some young people, and it's like it's it's always a good atmosphere. You get really good treatment. Everybody's super nice, and the fans are always rocking. So and even in the bad weather, man, I thought, man, I hope you know they will hang out. And it was raining, cold, but everybody had a great time. So so yeah. it means a lot. It means a lot. I love it. Good, good. Um, <laughs> tell me about your new album. How? What was the, what's the reception so far? How good. It's, it hasn't been that long. I think yeah. it's been, we talked about it 28th just of October was the release date, so it's just a couple of months. What's the kind of feedback you've gotten so far? Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Yes, especially like, yeah, all the, all the singles, all the videos. I think they came out so killer. I don't know if you've seen the videos. Yeah, so Time for Justice was yeah. the first single, and uh, Children of the Dawn, that's one of my favorite songs and uh, all the duets with Rob Halford everybody seems to love that and, and total and eclipse I, of the heart oh, total, yes, and then man. right when the eclipse happened yeah. Did you get a, like an uptick in, yeah, in, in, yes, in streams? Yes, we did. <laughs> we yeah, did. Yeah. Okay. I don't know exactly how many, but yeah, it was like that day peaked everything and um, and it was uh, Rob's choice. Rob Helford wanted to do Total Eclipse of the Heart. And so, oh my God, wow. And and my choice was Living After Midnight. So so he said, let's do both. And I couldn't believe it. And I'm so happy and grateful. That so quick plug for your new album. You want to just say whatever you yes. want? Yes. Yeah. yeah, guys and girls, if you haven't heard it yet, it's called Conquerors Forever Strong and Proud. I love it so much. It has 20 killer songs on it. And check out all the videos. They're great. They're kind of Mad Max style. And I love them. And and two duets with Rob Halford and oh, and I love him. He was I, my I, hero. I, I personally think this album mm -hmm. is on par and maybe even a little bit better than your Warlock albums. It, it oh, might be one of your best solo albums. And I'm not just saying that because it's brand new and here I am oh. sitting next to you. I, I, I really, I truly, I truly mean that I think the new album is, is so, ver there's a lot of variety mm -hmm. and you're hitting every mark. You know, like a lot of heavy songs, a light songs. Uh, oh, good, but good. let me ask you this. I, 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 I feel the same. I feel oh, yeah, well. the same. Yes, <laughs> yes, I feel the same. And of course, every album should be always the best record of your life. But I think this one, I could feel it's, it's yeah, extra yeah, special. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It has killer songs on it and that's the reason why we did so many singles and videos yeah. and and the last video was uh, the first animated video lean mean rock machine i don't know if you've yes, seen it it's funny and yeah so five six singles already that that's that's a good feeling for an album usually you get one or maybe two and um, yeah i've heard the fans so, so pick it, it up so. you gotta pick it up yeah check um, it out uh, let me tell you, so I was going through your back catalog and I go, okay, I'm, I, I, that's how I do. I set myself up for interviews. I psych, I know, I psych myself I know. up and I go, in the 90s, when the grunge hit, was it you trying to find yourself musically? You know, I, there's a couple of country or groove rock or industrial styles you're going at it. Was it you trying to find yourself or was it management pushing you in these different directions? Oh, no, no, actually uh, the only time management or record company said, ah, you have to make it more commercial. That was on our third album, True Steel. And they got somebody who mixed it pretty, like I would say pretty commercial, like radio friendly. And we thought, oh no, you know, we were a metal band. So that was the only time that I can say somebody pushed us. But we were really young and it was either you lose your record deal or you do what they, you know, ideas like it was. It was hard. It was really hard. But um, the Love Me in Black album, I think, is one of my favorite records, and it's very, I think, very classy. Yes, it's totally different. It's a little industrial, but I love it. And I like the groove. I like yeah, the groove. No? That, that's a nice groove. And you look yeah, back at it, yeah. it's it's like yeah. Yeah, and it was definitely. a difficult time when you know when suddenly when metal and rock was all like changing and then you could only hear grunge and uh, yeah and then I did one record it was actually uh, after the Angels Never Die album that was uh, done in New Jersey with Jack Ponty he was the producer and guitar player I was 93 and then we did another album in 95 
and the album was almost done and it was almost mixed and then I went to Jack Ponty and I said hey Jack I got to talk to you and he said what is it I said Jack I don't feel this album he said what you mean the album is done already we're twice over budget and I said I don't feel it and it was a time like in 95 I thought man you know it was really difficult so he said what shall I do and I said I don't know but I don't feel the songs anymore so he brought in these cool people from New York Kamun and Andreas um, they were like kind of like drum and bass guys and we started to jam a little bit in the studio and I thought oh I think that will not work out and then suddenly I heard a groove yeah. it was the song they want and I thought wow I love it and that was it and then we did this album machine to machine album yeah machine to machine that was the title and I totally loved it and I think the diehard metal fans they were a little bit shocked <laughs> because it was not like you know it was not like the did, did you ever say to yourself you know what I, you know like that era the 90s the 2000s it was hard for everyone it was. a lot of people were giving up starting other jobs did you ever say do you ever think to yourself no. Oh man, I, I can't no. do this anymore. No, 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 I, no, no. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go become a doctor. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> no, I always wanted to do music and I always wanted to sing and I thought. So you never no. give up, is that? No, it? I never give up. I never give up, because I love it so much and and we could still really do a nice tour in Europe. In America it was tough because radio and TV, everybody was doing the crunch thing. But in Europe, there's lots of like you know more like word of mouth, like, you know, fans talk. It's not, the industry um, can't take over so much, but yeah. in the States it was all grunge. And then I delivered, I think, three, four records to the record company and I said, well, uh, what kind of single do you like? And I said, I think this song is great and this, check this one out. And I said, is it grunge? And I said, oh, no, no, no. And I said, well, it has to be grunge. I said, no, it's not grunge. <laughs> and then I said, well, we can't release it. If it's not grunge sounding, I said, but please check out the songs. And I said, no, we can't. So it took a long time till the first album release was um, in the States. It was calling the Wild album. Yeah. And then you could feel, oh, it's going, you know, it's uh, there's something, you know, working already. And then I went on to with Ronnie James Dio in 2000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from there on on, I think metal is like, you know, it's like steady and, you know, going bigger and bigger. And yeah, it always goes up and down and sometimes so, time is on your side. Yeah, sometimes yeah. not so, so. What do you think, what's next for Doro? Okay, you released a new album. Is it a live yeah. album, a documentary? What's next? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, I just celebrated my big anniversary, so we did two huge shows. One Forty years. Yes, I mean, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And uh, yeah, Wacken is one of the biggest metal festivals for people who don't know it. It's it's an awesome festival. Yes. It's like it's huge, but it's great. It's only metal, and um, we did their big celebration, two and a half hour shows with many guests like Joey Belladonna came up. Mm -hmm. and, Mickey D and Phil Campbell of Morad came up and Blind Guardian, uh, Anze Kirsch was there, it was awesome. So we did a big, big celebration and then we did a big celebration in Düsseldorf, that's where I'm originally from, from Germany. And we did another two and a half hour show and Elisa White Glues of Arch Enemy came and we sang together and the old singer from Arch Enemy, Angela Gosso, she yes, was there as yes, well. Yes. So, so both of these ladies were together on the same stage, so that was a really special moment. Uh, Taya Turunen, the ex-singer of Night, which was there, and uh, and Miller of Creator was there. We did Miller, Ace of Spades yeah. together, and so many great guests. And so we are working on a Blu-ray, DVD, oh, okay. and live CD, and we want to put it out next year, are you, are you January, gonna, February. Are you going to put a documentary? So January, February next year, live DVD, Blu-ray, yeah. the whole thing. Is it going to include like a documentary? Uh, or we already did so many documentaries okay. and right, other right, DVDs. Right, right. Yeah, there's so many <laughs> DVDs and Blu-rays. For example, the strong and proud. Yes. It has a long documentary, and uh, and the last uh, live CD and DVD was um, and Blu-ray was Triumph and Agony Live. There's a long history, so so I don't know if we will do it now because it's already four and a half hour show. Yeah. So okay. so right. we will see. But since we have done it so much, and, and I guess my last question is: everybody asks me this. Ask Doro when is she going to do a proper North American tour? Oh, like you yeah, do this festival yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. You know, you come back and forth. For, you're doing mm. another festival, I believe. Is it Milwaukee? Milwaukee Metal yes, Fest. Yes. Yeah, on May but 17th. Is there going to be a proper 
Yes, yes, probably. Uh, we actually we changed uh, the agencies, and uh, I just met our okay. new agent right today. Here? Right here, yeah, right oh, really? here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. His name Can is Canada Sullivan. included? Is Canada included? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, good. And his name is Sullivan, Sullivan Big. So that's mm -hmm. our new agency, and he just was here in the dressing room. He promised that he would get Man, us. Man, we're good getting gigs. real time news. Yes, real yes, time news. yes, yes. Just As we speak, ten minutes ago. So, yeah, and so I, yeah, we are definitely planning long tour and I don't good, know exactly good, when and good, how good. but the last tour was actually with Metal Church in 2019 oh, oh. and then yeah COVID hit so we had another tour yes. in the making but we had to cancel that so so I'm, I'm ready all right and, and yeah. I think that's our cue and I appreciate your time <laughs> thank, thank you, you Dora so Pesh much. pick up her new album Conqueress and what's the rest of it Conqueress Conqueress forever strong and forever proud. strong and proud yeah, it's a long title that's yes why. yes but North American tour also yes, coming up check out Canada. And in the next year, the Blu-ray live. Yes, like, yes, January, February. Yes. And yeah. And that's yeah. it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you again. Oh, Thank you so much for all the time. Thank you, you yeah, so much. You're a killer interviewer. I love your show. <laughs> Keep on rocking, guys.